This is a short video about chainsaw bars. I've just put this saw together out of two. One had had, had a repair to the uh, top handle fitting here and of course long, put long screws in there and it had poked through the oil tank. And then that one had been robbed of the starter and the exhaust and all sorts of things. And the other one was reasonably complete but it was seized. So one, one saw out of two bad ones. Anyway we've got to sort out a bar for it and I looked in my pile and there's a bar here. It's uh, suitable for 38 Pico which the 023 runs on a 38 Pico. So we're going to go through some bar faults and what to do with them. So common faults on bars are excessive wear and splaying of the rails. Another one would be chips off the side of the rails and the bar being bent. The, the splaying can be just lack of oil, uh, blunt chain and forcing the, uh, the, the chain to cut, uh, slack chain battering about. The chips off the side of the rails are when the, the burrs have been allowed to form and not removed and then when the burr actually breaks off when they're really bad it takes part of the rail with them. And then of course the rail is only half the thickness at that point and so with more wear you'll get a dip there and so you'll, you'll get a lumpy surface. Bending of course is getting the saw trapped, getting the bar trapped when you fell in or stuff like that or yanking at the bar when you've got it stuck when you're cross cutting. Where you've got excessive wear in one particular place like here, it's where somebody's used uh, a chainsaw probably for cutting firewood and the chain has never been really that sharp and gets blunter all the time and maybe the oil was not very good and the, the bars, the saw's just been forced through. So this is one that I use when I'm assessing candidates just for them to say what's wrong with that. Yeah. The other thing of course is the oil holes being blocked which uh, directly results in rail and chain wear. So if we have a, a bar that's fairly worn then the first thing to do is to check whether the rails are level. Well, level because what happens is if you're not very good at sharpening you'll end up sharpening one side more than the other or better than the other or you'll end up with big teeth on one side and small teeth on the other well the big teeth actually uh, take more power so they put more stress on that side of the rail so therefore that rail wears more and you end up with, with uneven rails and then when you've got uneven rails the saw will cut in a curve so the thing to do this is the recognized way to do it is to put the, saw, the, the bar in the vise and then draw file it I'll just get this so it holds the thing and then you draw file it like that and you carry on like that until the rails are level and even and square then you can check it with a set square then you can just check it like that against the light but once you've got them level you've obviously created burrs by filing the, uh, the rails down so the next thing to do would be to get rid of the 
the burrs because as we said if the burrs break off they'll damage the rail now then take it for granted that as you file the filings go that way so if you file away from the the groove then the filings end up on here whereas if you file like that then the filings end up in the groove so you do this and I'm actually filing at an angle because if you put a slight bevel on that corner there then that prevents burrs forming so easily because you don't have a sharp edge and actually the, rail, the rails have to wear down to the bottom of the bevel before a burr can start forming again so that's easy that side but how do you do this side because it goes against the rule because the, the filings could go in the groove you have to turn the bar around and start from that end like that if you notice I'm always filing away from the nose bearing as well because we don't want filings in the nose bearing so having got rid of the burrs and put a bevel on there and got the rails level then the next thing to do is just to clear all the rubbish out of the bottom of the groove yeah, actually I think just there maybe just slightly pinched there but we'll check that so you do the groove and then you clean the oil hole out now the next thing to do once you've got that far is you've filed some off the rails and of course the chain sits in the groove so the next thing to do is to check the depth of the groove with one of these with a depth gauge setting tool or something like this on the steel one there's calibrations on the end so check the depth in various places and I will stick me thumbnail against it like that just because it's easier to do that than try and count all the calibrations then you offer this up against one of the drive links so you put the top of it against the bottom of a a link and then offer it up against the drive link and from there I can see we've got at least one mil it's worth a gap between the bottom of this drive link and the bottom of the groove which is fine if you had no gap then the drive link would be rubbing on the bottom of the groove create a lot of heat um, and generally use up a lot of power um, and, and wear the drive link and of course if the drive link wears then it passes wear onto the sprockets and it all doesn't work very well I hope this has been useful it's very important to get your rails level get rid of the burrs by putting a bevel on there clean everything out and then make sure that the chain will run freely one thing I haven't mentioned is the nose sprocket on these nose sprockets the chain is actually lifted off the end of the bar by the sprocket and the sprocket should run freely and on some husky bars etc there's a little oiler there a, a greaser but once you start greasing you've got to continue greasing because it seems to me that when you put grease in that bearing and it's running up to speed the grease will get flung out slightly and that grease will act as a an oil seal really to prevent the chain oil from getting to that bearing steel uh, bars don't have a greasing point and their nose bearings don't seem to collapse overnight so it's just one of those weird just observations hope that helps